Mr. Chairman, we're, uh, we're here during a, uh, I wouldn't call it historic, because historic are things that just simply happen every once in a while, but uh, a shutdown of our federal government. It's come because uh, our colleagues on the other side of the building uh, have simply taken the attitude, it's my way or the highway. Uh, that's a wonderful way to, to, uh, to look at life, but uh, it rarely works in a, uh, in a life that, uh, that you and I live in and that uh, most of our colleagues uh, and our constituents live in uh, back home. If you look at the Constitution by which we govern this country, uh, it itself was a series of compromises. Big states, little states, unicameral, bicameral. Uh, across the board, there were compromises within that document that have allowed us to, to uh, try to uh, pr prolong and preserve this wonderful experiment that we call the American dream and self-governance. And, uh, and it's uh, my way, the highway that our, our leadership, or the leadership of the Senate has, uh, has taken is, uh, is calling that into question. Uh, the, the statements made over the last several days uh, by the folks who support the, the leader in the, uh, in the Senate uh, must make them feel really good. But those of us on the receiving end of those comments, uh, it is insulting uh, to be treated this way. It is insulting to have every opportunity we've put over there to, uh, to try to reach a compromise on this issue, to have it simply dismissed out of hand. Uh, not taken up on its merits, but simply looked at it and said, you know, never mind. It's the lower body over there. We'll treat these folks like, like children. Uh, their ideas are unworthy of simple consideration, unworthy of debate. Let's just table them uh, and put them on the table with all the other hundreds of bills that this House has passed over the last two years and eight months uh, to try to move this country into a better position and move it further along. JFK said, now let us never negotiate out of fear. Now, we agree with that. But he also said, let us not fear to negotiate. Why is Harry Reid fearing the negotiations? We've got our conferees ready to go. They've been named this morning, and women all. Uh, and the simple question is, Mr. Reid, where are your conferees? Why are you afraid of getting into a room with House Republicans and House Democrats, if they'll ever uh, appoint their conferees, and work this issue out? Where are you, why are you fearing uh, that optic? You're fearing it because you know that uh, the American people are behind House Republicans in this effort to, uh, to rein this in. At its core is the Affordable Care Act. The core of this uh, issue is the Affordable Care Act. Uh, it is, uh, uh, without question, this country is on an unsustainable fiscal track. We cannot afford the promises we've already made to each other over the next 75 years. Our grandchildren are at risk for not being able to self-govern because, self because of the uh, spending plans that we've, made it, that we've got in place right now. The Affordable Care Act adds a new third entitlement to that mix, and it, it also is unsustainable. So why would we want to continue this process uh, in the face of the threats that, it already that we already have with respect to the, uh, the spending plans that are now in place for uh, Medicare and Social Security and Medicaid? Uh, they will bankrupt this country soon. Uh, we've got hard choices to make with health care. Uh, there are a, uh, a f infinite demand. There is infinite demand for health insurance, health care, unquestionable. And there are finite resources. That requires a reconciliation. At its core, this question of the Affordable Care Act is who does that reconciliation? Should it be governments? Should it be 15 bureaucrats in a, in a room that nobody knows who they are deciding what that care should look like? Or should it be patients and caregivers making some of the most difficult decisions we will ever make in life to decide on health care issues? My money is on the folks in the, in the fight. My money is on the families and the caregivers and those processes make far better decisions in these very difficult reconciliation process than anything that could be done here in Washington, D.C. So at its core, that's the fight. Who makes your health care decisions at the and how can this country afford the promises we've already made, which this president has said over and over that he will not negotiate with respect to Medicare and, Medi and Social Security? Where are his plans? Where are Harry Reid's plans for those two entitlements? And now they've taken the, that same mantra with respect to the Affordable Care Act. They're refusing to negotiate anything about that. It's, un, uh, uh, it's unseemly. Uh, it's un-American. And quite frankly, Mr. Uh, uh, Speaker, uh, my constituents are demanding that, uh, that we fix this, that we, we stop this shutdown is unnecessary, uh, but they also demand that the Senate uh, come to the middle, come to the table with their conferees, and let's begin the process of working that out. It is uh, um, uh, unseemly, as I said, for the Senate to continue to dismiss out of hand every attempt. And quite frankly, those of us on the House uh, Republican side are getting criticized 
uh, for having to look like we're negotiating with ourselves, trying to try, finding time finding an attempt time and time again to try to find some middle ground that the Senate could, in fact, come to work with us. And this uh, my way, the highway attitude that the leadership in the Senate has taken is, uh, is, not, is beneath the dignity of this, uh, this body. And I yield back. The House will receive a message.